How long am I going to do this? Solitude was proving detrimental to any glimmer of hope. My heart felt heavier with each moment. How lonely the wistful, forlorn mind can become. I'd been swept up in a frightening world I didn't understand and couldn't possibly control. I can't possibly figure out what's happening to father if I'm stuck here. Only Hichikata can give me permission to leave, and he's gone. All I could do was wait. Lamenting things I couldn't change wouldn't improve my situation, and would arguably make it worse. I knew I couldn't trust the men of the Shinshingumi completely. They were, after all, men who could take life in the blink of an eye. It would be just as easy for them to end my life. Well, at least they've all been nice to me, for now. They're nice men deep down, right? Does anyone ever call you gullible? Ah, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, you didn't notice me? Well, it's my turn to keep watch. Did you hear everything I said? Mm -hmm. He'd heard me. He had definitely heard me. I wanted to scream, but before I could open my mouth, Saito stepped out from behind the door. I think that's enough fraternizing, Soji. Wait, were you here the whole time too? I arrived only moments ago. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, um, I'm sorry for, for screaming like that. It's nothing, and at any rate, it's not as if you said anything that would cause trouble for you. Ah, uh, true, I didn't say anything, um, bad, but still. Well, I was just embarrassed to be caught talking to myself. As Saito watched me fidgeting and mumbling, his eyes pierced right through me. I came to tell you that dinner is ready, but have I interrupted something? Oh, no, nothing at all. I had intended to wait until you and Soji finished your discussion, but... I figured if I left the two of you alone, it would be longer before I saw either of you. So, I came in. Saito shrugged shortly before we caught the sound of footsteps approaching us noisily. Heske shot through the door. The moment he saw us, however, his face fell. Hey, guys. Dinner time. My apologies, Heske. I'll be there presently. Yeah, yeah. You too, Chizulu. Hurry up, or it's going to be gone before you know it. Sorry, Toto. I'll be there as soon as I can. He turned to leave, but he halted in his tracks. He pursed his small lips together before speaking. Look, can you drop the whole Toto thing? Just call me Heske. Everybody else does. Are you sure? Yeah, why not? We're practically the same age. Oh, and we don't need to use honorifics. Alright. I'll do that then, Heske. Great. Sounds better already. Shall we go? 
You're late. You kids are late. Who's gonna answer to my crying stomach? You mean growling, Shin. Really? He's so simple sometimes. You guys ought to apologize to my stomach. He wanted to dig in, but I said, no, we've got to wait for him. You're such a softy, Shin. Alright guys, it's time to eat. And that means every man for himself. Man, there's barely enough here to feed a kid, let alone a man. So, I'll just have to... Take yours. Survival of the fittest. This food is mine. Hey, why do you always steal my food? <laughs> it's because of the difference in size, kid. I've got a bigger body. That means I need more food. Well, I'm still growing, old man, so I gotta eat more too. Sorry you had to see this, Chizuru. They're always like this. I've, um, gotten used to it. How are we to deal with accepting such insanity? Oh, why aren't you taking anything? Yeah, I'm good. If I eat too much, I slow down. Hey, what do you mean, slow? Ah, whatever. I'm taking that. Go for it. As long as I've got a little sake to sip, I'm good. Sounds like I'm going with sake too. Try not to worry about eating too much or being a freeloader or something, Chizuru. Just eat your little heart out, okay? I, I know. I can't help but feel a little bad, though. Wow, if you let that get to you, you're gonna lose. You have to protect what's yours. Uh, okay. Always eating alone made the experience of dinner with these men both an exhilarating and a frightening evening for me. It was... Actually, fun. <laughs> See, there's that smile. You ought to do that more often. We aren't gonna hurt you. Harada. His mouth curled up into an honest smile of his own. Had I really looked so down? Perhaps they were all trying to cheer me up. I wasn't quite sure how to feel. I was conflicted over whether or not to feel pity for myself or to appreciate the moment for what it was. The joy seemed to be winning out, however, and I caught myself smiling as Nue entered the room. <laughs> Gentlemen, do you have a moment? As usual, his voice was warm, but in his eyes was a level of solemnity I'd never seen before, at least during our brief acquaintance thus far. The warmth of the room slowly evaporated. I 
I've just received word from Osaka. Sanen has been gravely injured in battle. What? What happened? A dry goods store in Osaka was invaded by a group of Ronin. Toshi and Sanan arrived in time to enter the fray and subdue the Ronin. However, Sanan was stabbed during the encounter. Is is he going to be all right? According to the letter, he is gravely hurt, but the wound is on his left arm. It will be hard for him to wield a blade, but he will almost certainly survive. Oh, thank goodness! I exhaled as a brief sigh of relief, but the rest of the room was tense, still itching for answers. He should be returning here in a few days. Now please, excuse me, I must speak with Kondo. He turned as he spoke, his last words delivered over his shoulder, and was gone. It was Saito who soon broke the awkward silence. An injury so grave, he cannot clutch his sword. Perhaps the wound severed an artery. To wield a blade with one arm is a disservice. He may never carry a blade again, if it's true. Oh, at last, I understood. Fighting with a single hand would mean less strength behind his blows. Against an opponent of similar skill, he would almost certainly lose. If push comes to shove, he'll have to take it. I don't think Sanan's just going to give up. Don't jinx him, Soji. It's gonna look bad if officers start joining the Furies. Huh? Wait, that didn't make any sense. What are the Furies? Oh, so Furies come from something you drink, where any injuries could be cured. Heske! Huh? Before I could move, Harada was on his feet and halfway across the room. I barely had time to gasp before he drove his fist into Heske. Wow. Heske, are you alright? Sano, you're overreacting. And that was my bad, Heske. I slipped first. You alright? Sorry. After a moment, Harada curtly nodded to Heske in an apology, the latter offering a quick, pained smile. <laughs> Nah, I should have been watching what I said. Still, Sano, you didn't have to hit me. His punch had enough force to knock out a lesser man, but Heske seemed unfazed. It was never clear how different these men were. Jizuru, everything you just heard is something you are never to repeat. I'm sure you're curious, but we can't tell you anything else. 
so don't ask. And forget what you just heard from Heske. His voice was friendly, but his eyes gave his words a cold weight that made me feel uncomfortable. The furies that Heske spoke about are men to be pitied. Okita's voice was flat, emotionless. Um... A sudden chill of melancholy entered his eyes. I couldn't bring myself to say anything more. Thankfully, Nagakura broke the awkward silence. It's nothing you need to worry yourself about. You don't have to get all worked up. I was only a guest in their house, not a warrior of the Shinsengumi. The truth of the Shinsengumi's secrets were no business of mine, something I'd known. There was little value in that sentiment, however. Put it from your mind. Involving yourself in our affairs will only put you in greater danger. I bit my lip and kept silent. The wall between us was almost tangible, almost far too large an obstacle for me to defeat easily. <sighs> I finished my dinner in sad silence, excused myself, and returned to my room. I had a great deal to think about. Furies, huh? Hmm. I wondered to myself if the Furies referred to the Rakshasa pictured in the Buddhist texts. Though I wasn't well versed, I recalled reading a text about a man-eating demon god with that name. I have no idea where to start, from drinking the medicine to Captain becoming a Fury. No, I wasn't supposed to think about those things. I was only going to get myself in trouble if I stuck my nose where it didn't belong. Seeing or hearing the wrong thing could kill me. If I die, I'll have a hard time looking for my father. The Shinshangumi captains are keeping themselves hush around me, especially about the Furies. Are they doing it to protect me? Even if I dug around, I'm sure nothing would good would come of it. With that in mind, I did my best to clear my head of the evening's events and slipped into my futon. March, 1864. It fast approached a month since I began living this within the Shinsengumi headquarters. Hijikata and Sanon finally returned to the compound from their trip to Osaka, but spirits were low. Sanon's injury had unforeseen consequences for everyone in the organization. Day-to-day -day operations became hectic for a little while. His wounds seemed quite dire, and they drained whatever goodness in his nature he'd hoped to keep. Sanan would spend days holed up in his room, protected by a barrier of impenetrable silence. If he were to leave his room, a rare occasion now, he was often short-tempered and quickly retreated. Even though I, too, spent days in the exile of my room, he seemed to take that much differently. Sanan seemed trapped within a painful memory, each day bringing him closer to a gloomy twilight. I softly pondered what service I could offer to the Shinsengumi if I were not allowed to search for my father. I'm sure Hichikata is overwhelmed with whatever business he's dealing with, but I need to visit him. I realize with the tension so high 
that it's better to have Hijikata on my side rather than not. I crept around the hall looking for Hijikata, but he was nowhere to be seen. Would it be impolite to visit his room directly? As I paced around the hall in contemplation, an unknown warrior appeared before me. I've been living in the Yagi residence for a month, but he was unfamiliar to me. My current dilemma compelled me to approach him. Um, excuse me, have you seen Hijikata? The man turned to respond, and my eyes widened to scan his enormous frame before he spoke. And who might you be? Mind telling me what you're doing here? Oh, I am... Well, it's a long story. Don't make me repeat myself. Answer me. Uh, I'm... Chizuru Yukimura. Ah, I recall hearing the commander recruited a young apprentice as his new page. Must be you. Uh, yes. I wasn't aware they were telling people that I was an apprentice warrior at headquarters. However, my reputation was the last thing on my mind as I faced this man's pressuring gaze. I didn't appreciate the harsh scrutiny he seemed to impose, scanning me from head to toe. Hmm. hmm. So why don't you start by telling me how you know the chief and the commander? I hear you're from Ido, but what kind of tricks did you have up your sleeve to slide in here? I, I didn't know such thing. Ah, but judging by how defensive you've become, it sounds like I'm right on target. Look, this isn't the place where someone without any worth on the battlefield or in the strategy room can waltz right in without earning it. I'm going to ask you one more time. How did you get in with the chief and commander? I, Kan Sai Takeda, am asking you a question. What makes you think you can just ignore me? He grew increasingly agitated, almost like a petulant child, because I refused to answer him. He reached his massive hand over towards me as if to grab me, but then a voice stopped him. Hey, Takeda, what the hell are you doing here? When he recognized Hijikata's voice, he snapped his hand back to his side. Well, well, Commander Hijikata, I'm here on business with Chief Kondu. That's so? I've heard of nothing about this. He called me on special orders to assist him while Colonel Salmon is out of commission. However, as it appears, Chief Kondo is nowhere to be seen, so I will be on my way now. Takeda turned to take his leave, but then slowed his step, leaving us with a few words. As a side note, Commander Hijikata, are the rumors true 
that you welcome this young blood as your page. Yes, but it is none of your concern to know more. Ah, forgive me. I'll refrain from pressing for details, as it seems to be out of my jurisdiction. I do, however, question your predisposition towards keeping those from your birthplace close to you. It seems I forget myself. Please excuse me. Once Takada exited the hall, I couldn't help but feel a rush of relief. Hey, Yukimura, don't be walking around the headquarters without permission. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to cause trouble. Your presence here is not common knowledge, and only those staying at the Yagi residence know. Be mindful of anyone who visits from the Maikawa residence. Is that clear? Clear. I promise to be more careful going forward. So, may I ask who that man was? That man is the captain of the 5th division. His name is Kan Yusai Takeda. His swordmanship is decent, but he is well read and possesses a cunning mind for military science. He's a tricky one, so be careful. Furthermore, if you have no business being out, then I expect you to stay put in your room. Hijikata attempted to dismiss me, having said what he felt was an appropriate as a stern commander. I... Ask Kijikata if I can help around the compound. I didn't get many chances to see Hijikata, so I took the opportunity to offer my aid to the house. Um, I actually have a favor to ask of you, Hijikata. Staying in my room for long periods alone makes me feel terribly useless. Would you please give me something to do? I'll do anything. Cleaning, laundry, anything. Hichikata sensed the sincerity of my plea, and it appeared as though he actually considered it. Do you really find yourself incapable of occupying your time in your room productively? Well, um, a little. Fine, I shall discuss with Gen, so until further notice, stand by for your orders. Really? This is under the condition that you are to keep from interacting with outsiders, understand? Understood, but thank you so much. The next day, Inoue informed me that I was given more freedom within the headquarters, which allowed me to exit my room freely. My duties included cleaning, laundry, and cooking. Not the most glamorous of chores, of course. However, it gave me an opportunity to occupy myself as opposed to going stir-crazy in my room. June 1864. The fourth year of the Bunku era became the Ganshi Ganon, and the summer sweetly blossomed. 
spring shed its blooming skin, giving birth to lush green trees facing the wide open sky. During one of these beautiful summer days, I finished cleaning after everyone ate breakfast, and Saito brought me to the hall to Hijikara. Commander, it's Saito. I've brought Yukimura. Come in. Saito responded by quietly opening the sliding doors, gesturing me to enter the room. Upon entering, I saw Hijikara, but also Okita, Nagukura, Harada, and Heske in the hall. It appeared that only the captains, who were aware of my situation, were present. I know you have been waiting for some time, but the time has finally come to let you out. Really? I could barely contain the excitement in my voice as soon as the words came out of his mouth. So, is it true that there was a man in Fushimi that matched my father's profile? We're not sure if it's true or not. It was our intention to let you verify for us, considering his daughter would recognize him best. I nodded in response. For now, any information pertaining to my father was appreciated, so I was thankful. So where is this man who supposedly looks like my father? Our initial reports outline a place called the Terada Inn in Fushimi. Saito is assigned to check. Saito is assigned. I wasn't sure if that meant I was to accompany Saito or if I would have to wait longer for him. Then Harada chimed in. But that doesn't necessarily mean Kodo is a guest of this inn. Yeah, being sighted in Fushimi could just mean he was walking around the city of Kyoto. Exactly. So that's why I'm asking the three of you, Harada, Shinpachi, and Heske, to take her along on your rounds to assist her search for Kodo. All of us? Usually we split up and go on rounds separately. Hichikata didn't bother entertaining a response, instead looking towards me. Was he suggesting... These were the men who were responsible for dealing with me, should I attempt to flee. Heske must have sensed this as well, so he made no attempt to push the issue any further. I understand what you're saying, but I don't like the fact that you're making us do all the babysitting. I thought you planned on patrolling as well, Hichikata. So, for your own benefit, why don't you show her your adorable page, the ropes, by having her with you? What the hell are you talking about? Aren't you the one who pushed her onto me? I'm not having any of your insolence today. She isn't my page. Maybe, but all of the lower ranking men are starting to believe it. There is, after all, a grain of truth in every lie. So why don't you give her a befitting job? As Okita and Hijikata bickered at one another, the mood of the room was locked in their tense words until Harada 
whispered to me. Well, Kyoto, as you've seen, isn't the safest place right now. So, don't force yourself to leave. I mean, we all know what Kodo looks like, too. So the risk doesn't have to be yours alone. Um, I could look for my father in Fushimi, or join the patrol rounds assuming he's moved places, or stay here to keep safe from the outside, or accompany Hijikata as his page. What should I do? Accompany Hijikata as his page. In that case, Please allow me to accompany you, Hijikata. Hey, what the hell are you saying? Hijikata's voice trembled irately, as if troubled by my suggestion, which made me nervous, but... I thought I had a shot in convincing him. I mean, walking around town with you may help with getting leads to find my father. With the other warriors questioning my place, it may be in our best interest for me to act like your page. It could convince the others. I recalled, in this moment, my introduction to Takeda, who voiced his skepticism plainly. After sharing my viewpoint, Hijikata's expression soured. Then he responded. <laughs> Listen, there is no need to believe in what Soji was describing about the city. He's just having fun and messing with... Now, aren't you happy you have an adorable little page, Hijikata? Hijikata stared bitterly towards Okita, and again it seemed we were trapped in their bubble of silence. But eventually... Very well. But you'd better make absolutely sure that you stay the hell out of my way. Yes, I understand. I was somewhat surprised he obliged me, but I was so excited to join Hijikata and go outside. <laughs>